What's up YouTube, Dal here from Zephyr War Games, and today I am bringing you an update to Dark Worlds post Photon Hypernova. Yes, I was absolutely scratching my brain trying to find a way of how uh, Salgus can be used and abused in Dark Worlds, and I finally found a way. So massive shout out to uh, Pac and Jesse Cotton on this one, two of the best players uh, to kind of be using inspiration from, who kind of unlocked a combo route in my brain that made it work. So, please smash that like button, hit that notification bell, and subscribe. If you get this video up to at least 50 likes in the first 24 hours, I will also bring you a test hand video to go along with this. With all of that out of the way, to find out the additional spice and how this deck now operates, let's get into it. So, of course, we are going to start off with Triple Fabled Raven. Now, the reason we are playing going back to the Fabled Raven route is because in order to abuse the uh, Sargus and in order to get all of the Therions working within the deck, you do need to go through a Synchro route, or it is the best and easiest way to do so, uh, and Fabled Raven helps you do that. On top of that, it will also add additional synergy to your deck by triggering some of the Dark World effects and, of course, leading you into other Synchro plays. Then standard, this doesn't really change too much. You could arguably, if you wanted to, cut down a Greffa or a Rainbow. The issue with this deck going into the upcoming format is that your opponent will have a Macro Cosmo monster running around. That being said, if you want to be dealing with that Macro Cosmo monster, my advice for a deck like this is to play the Astral Karibo, because the Astral Karibo will give you a direct route into um, the number 97 Dragula Bond, and of course it will also give you an option to go into Baguska. So you've got a way to control the board, and you've got a way to OTK the board, which is really, really important. I've then gone with one gold and two silvers for this version, and with the two silvers, the idea behind that is because we actually want to be using it off of Fabled Raven, because Fabled Raven discard any silver or gold will give you instant access to a level 8 synchro, which is what you want to get into in order to trigger off your Sargus plays. We've then got the one Ceruli alongside the one Beige as well for the Dark Worlds. All pretty straightforward and simple on this one. Yes, Fabled Raven discard Beige will only give you access to a level 7, but in a sense of Fabled Raven discard uh, Beige plus any other monster will give you the access to the level 8 Synchro, which is really, really important. So that's it for the Dark World lineup, including Fabled Raven. We are still playing the Danger version, and the reason we are still playing the Dangers is because Bigfoot can be very, very important um, going second against a cash matchup. And what you've got to keep in mind and remember for your Dangers is that they just need to be discarded. They don't need to specifically hit the graveyard. So your Dangers will still trigger and still activate under uh, Macrocosmo or a Rise Heart as well. Then, of course, we've got the honorary uh, danger in the form of Zephros and, of course, the Catalyzer. Again, Catalyzer can give you very early access or another way of getting Fabled Raven to the board should you want to. And now, the Spice. So, the Spice is one Furion King Regulus, one Furion Lily Borea, and then the last one, which I couldn't find my super rare copy of from Power of the Elements, is the uh, Abyss, and this is the Reptile one. Now the reason you only play these three, you could put a Reaper in if you wanted to, which deals with back row. But the idea is that through your extra deck, you're going to be going in to, a little bit of a preview here, the Diabolus um, Menacing Mantis. This is going to Foolish Barrel the uh, Lily Borea. And then off the back of that, you can then rank into a Saragus by using two level 8s that you want to in order to get into Lily. Uh, sorry, not Lily. In order to search out your Regulus, Regulus can then target Lily. You can then use Lily's effect to sack herself off. That will then give you access to the field spell. You then access the field spell, search out the Reptile. The Reptile will then be able to target the Lily. And then you can... Um, Reptile will allow you to discard a card and summon the Lily out. So straight away, that will put three level eights on the board in order for you to go into uh, your coach trainer if you want to. It does give you a kind of couple of different options, uh, which I thought was really, really kind of cool. And it did kind of give you a different, a different route of play, which I think would catch a lot of people off guard. And it's what I really, really like about that. And it's what I really like about the Fear and Engine itself in general. And I kind of really wanted to get Saragus involved in some form of play. I just think it's such a good underrated card that uh, I know it's only just come out. But in the right deck, it can be very, very powerful and very, very fun to play. So it was definitely something that I was looking to not abuse, but kind of get to as early as I possibly could in order to maximize potential. Uh, and yeah, just utilize it at its um, basically full power. So that's it for the monsters, apart from the reptile, which I'm hoping I'll be able to get my hands on. Uh, I've just got to dig it out of my common bulk. Moving on to the spells. For the spells, we are playing two Ascension, two Gates, uh, one Archives, double Allure, double Triple Tactics, 
and the one disc coliseum now if you really really wanted to um another kind of card you could be considering is uh the idea behind talents is you can steal your opponent's arise art and then if you wanted to, you could actually put your own Arise Heart in the extra deck and then rank up on top. That is entirely up to you. Again, if you wanted to do something like that, I would probably tailor this deck more for going like blind second. And you'd probably swap out the Ravens for Lava Golems. You'd put in Change of Heart. You'd put in um, Mind Control as well. And you'd basically be making the plan that if you go second, you're stealing your opponent's stuff and you're ranking up your own stuff um, and kind of turning your board around as quickly as you possibly can. So that's it for the spells, very straightforward and simple, and of course with a deck like this you don't really need to rely on um, the trap cards as much unless you wanted to make this a control version, which in this format is not the worst idea either. Moving on to the extra deck, so we start off with the one gigantic champion Sargus. So this is a brand new secret in Photon Hypernova. It is generic, it requires two level 8 monsters to make, which is really really cool. You don't need to detach a material to search out a Furion monster from the deck. So if you didn't, if you'd already opened up Regulus or already got to Regulus, you could bypass and go straight to the Reptile. On top of that as well, when a material is detached from an XYZ at any point around the field, you can uh, pop a card on the field, which is really, really kind of cool. Because if you're going second and you use something like Coach King or you use the effect of your Hope Harbinger to negate a spell, you can pop an additional card on top of that. Another card that you could consider if you wanted to, just to kind of rank this up and give it one more, if you wanted to push for like a big Zeus, is uh, your Spring Gun Ship, X-Blower. Now the reason this is so good is that this can actually rank on top of a Spring Gun Monster. And because it doesn't need to detach any materials for any of its effects, it's really, really kind of cool in that sense. And what the x bar will allow you to do is let you choose one of your opponent's main monster zones or spell and trap zones. You detach any number of materials from this card and if you do destroy it, the same number of cards, your opponent controls in the chosen zones and the adjacent monster and or spell and trap zones. During the main phase or battle phase or your opponent's main phase or battle phase, you can tag this out as a quick effect uh, until the end phase. What makes it good is you just make the x blower, use this effect to detach the material to pop two cards and then you rank on top into a Sargus. So it's definitely something you could be looking into adding. Um, I'm still playing around with the extra deck because space is rather tight when I'm trying to incorporate pretty much every summoning mechanic from the extra deck as possible, but it works out really, really nicely at the moment. We think got the one uh, Coach King Giant Trainer. Like I said, it's actually a lot easier with the Furions if you don't mind sacrificing your uh, Regulus and keep in mind as well, you'll use Lily Boreas effect to get the field spell, which then give you the Reptile. So you kind of need to control what level H you have on the board more, but you've got a lot easier ways to get them on board. The one Hope Harbinger, again, you can change this out if you want to. This is where the space is where you can start going for the more OTK push. It's entirely up to you. Rank 4s, Daguerreus and Baguska, pretty straightforward on that one. Two Grefford Dragons, um, it pains me to say this, but arguably you could cut it to one if you wanted to, uh, just because of space, but, you know, it's a Dark World deck, so you want to try and maintain the heart and soul. And then for the Link Monsters, we've got the one Appalooza, the one Nightmare Unicorn, the one IP Mascarina, and, of course, Crush Eep. Again, I would arguably say that these two are flex spots, and what I mean by that is if you kind of go want to go more aggressive, you take those two out, you don't need them at all. Cross Sheep's very nice because it will let you loop back your Fabled Raven in order to get multiple Synchro plays a turn. If you were going to go blind second as well, you could also go for the Zalantis and um, Mutt Rocker uh, kind of lockouts as well. It's entirely up to you. For the Synchros, we do play the one Grozer. This is like the best Fiend monster um, or level 8 Synchro monster for this deck because it discards as effect, not as cost. And then, of course, the one Mantis, which we've already kind of talked about. And then for the level 10s, we've got the one Baron de Fleur and the one Sword Soul um, Sovereign, purely because this will become a fat stack boss monster if everything is getting banished. Uh, and then Baron is just gener generic um, protection and Omni Negates and pop in and everything you need to. So that is it for the profile. Like I said at the start, I take no credit for the, like, the Furion involvement and how Mantis works because I saw that in Pax Gold Pride video but then I was like yo I can actually incorporate that in the correct synchro version of Dark Worlds to produce a really kind of cool end board and a really kind of cool interaction with the deck as well. Yes it does rely on the graveyard so like I said in the new format it may not be the strongest or the best it is just a very nice different alternative if like your locals doesn't uh, aren't playing cash and you're like, you know what, I want to try something a little bit different with my Dark World deck. This is definitely one way you can go with it. Uh, and it works out really, really nicely and is incredibly fun. Anyway. 
thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share. Like I said at the start of the video, if you get it up to at least 50 likes in the first 24 hours, I'll bring you a test down video for this version as well. So you can kind of see how you make the Sargus, how it interacts with the board, and how you can pretty much, if you've opened up well enough and you can loop back your Raven through Cross Sheep, you can actually end your board on a Baron, a Regulus, the Sargus, and on top of that, you can also add the um, Greffa Fusion Monster 2. So, really cool, really fun, and I thoroughly enjoy Dark Worlds. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, share. Till next time, as absolutely always, stay safe, and of course, happy dueling.